Hello and welcome. We have yet another special show match for you today between the Mongols and the Abbasid dynasty. I'm Zach Robinson, also known as Zero Empires. And joining him, I am Eric Robel, and we are delighted to share this very exciting game between our balanced team members. Uh, yeah, so spawning down to the south of the map in the red, we have Mark. He's going to be playing as the Mongols today. And uh, we could see already that uh, the Mongols, they, they start a little differently to mm -hmm. other civilizations. Mm -hmm. Their town center was packed up, um, and he already loosed his arrow with the Khan to give him a move speed bonus. So tell us a bit more about the Mongols here, Eric. Uh, okay, so all of their buildings, uh, or most of their buildings, we should say, uh, can pack and unpack. So this sort of mobility theme you see throughout the sieve of being able to move up in, and go to different locations. Uh, and a key building for this is the Uvu. So I believe there's already an Uvu built, perhaps? Um, it is. Yeah, there awesome. It is. So this is a building you build on top of the stone deposit. So there was originally a stone deposit here. He built it on top. And this building, as you can see, it's constantly producing stone over time. You can see he's got 80 plus stone already. And there's a couple of really cool things that Mongols do with stone that the other civs don't. So when you put buildings next to this, it allows them to double produce. So you're spending uh, the normal resource for the unit plus some stone, and then you get two units instead of one. So it gives them a really high flexibility with their production. Uh, and then the other the other thing is upgrade buildings. Uh, you can get like sort of a bonus or double type of upgrade. Like the this here, a really good example of the whistling arrow. So it gets extra duration and extra time. So every every bonus upgrade is going to do something a little bit different. But um, it definitely gives you some very interesting strategies to pursue. Of do I want to you know go for the text? Do I want to go for a big army and try to attack the enemy? Or you can actually even do it with your economic units. You could produce extra villagers and try to crank out your economy that way. Yeah, and it's worth noting that the Mongols cannot gain stone any other way through normal means. They can't mine it with villagers, they can't trade for it at the market, they mm -hmm. can't even be sent stone by yeah, their teammates. Yeah, yep. So they're really relying on we the We thought Uvin. of everything. <laughs> <laughs> can't pull a fast one on us. But uh, there are other ways to generate stone later on, uh, through landmarks and through trade, mm -hmm. um, once they uh, do, do some special techs, which we can talk about later on. But uh, over on the other side of the map, playing in the blue, we have Stefan. He's playing as the Abbasid uh, dynasty. And actually, um, both these civs are very different to what we've seen already. I think we've showcased the Holy Roman Empire, the English, and um, I can't remember what else we've shown, actually. I think it was just those two. Yeah, just those two, um, yep. And so, yeah, the, the, these two playing very differently to those. They're, they're more asymmetric. Um, the Abbasid dynasty, they're really all about the House of Wisdom. Yeah. This is the central focal point for this civilization. Mm -hmm. um, and they played very differently because they don't have to build landmarks to advance to the next age. This is the landmark. And instead of the building... The big one. Yeah, instead of building new ones, they actually build wings onto this landmark. They have the economic wing, the military wing, the culture wing they have the trade wing and when they complete these wings the building itself gets an upgrade visually but it also unlocks these technologies which are associated with each wing so right now he's doing the economic wing this will unlock these three special technologies uh, the fresh food stuffs the agriculture tech and the improved processing um, and that will allow him to get these bonuses but also gives him the flexibility as he's advancing to go, okay, well, do I want economy? Do I want military? Do I want uh, culture? But also for the House of Wisdom... There's more. There's more. <laughs> <laughs> as you build around it, um, all the buildings that are built in the influence of this building uh, contribute to the Golden Age. And when you have more structures, you reach a higher Golden Age level. And as you can see here, with 10 structures built around the House of Wisdom, you reach the first Golden Age, giving you 10% gather rate for all resources, which is huge. It's a nice bonus. So the Civ is really focused around the House of Wisdom and, and developing the House of Wisdom. Obviously unlocking the technologies in there as well, like fresh foodstuffs, which is reducing his villager cost by 50%. That's pretty nice. <laughs> it's really strong. Um, but yeah, the, there's a lot uh, going on here. We've got Mark already going up to the next stage with the deer stones here. Yeah, the deer stones is a pretty nice landmark for the Mongols because they have this aura around their outposts, which makes their cavalry faster. 
the Deerstones provides this. It's called the Yam Network. Um, and you see there it says cavalry and traders for outposts on the Yam Network. When you build the Deerstones, it upgrades this aura. So it also applies to all your infantry, all your villagers. So it gives you a lot of really uh, extra sort of strategies and stuff. And it's it, since your villagers are moving faster, you're going to get more resources, which is super good. And, you know, if you have an army of, like, archers and spearmen, then those guys are going to be moving faster the whole time. Um, and so the Deerstones will provide this aura. And as we talked about previously, you can move your buildings. So this is unique in that it's an outpost that can actually move so you can pack up and put it somewhere else and then get the aura, at, you know, maybe near your enemy or, you know, you need to, like, defend something. There's a lot of, a lot of nice potential with it. Yeah, that's one of the awesome things about the Mongols. They can move their landmarks, but they can also move everything else, as we said already. You can see there that uh, Mark actually built a barracks, and I think he was trying to move it yeah, to the Uvu. Yeah. But he got denied by the scout here, and I guess you know, he didn't want to, to risk um, potentially losing the cart to an early rush. Um, speaking of which, mm. Stefan is coming forward right now with an outpost uh, and forward villagers. So he's, he's rallying across the map with archers. He's got his outpost coming up right outside of Mark's base. This and Mark now escorting his, his archery <laughs> range with a spearman to try and get it next to the Uvu so that he can spend some of that banked stone. 600 Whoa, stone. Oh, he's really got a lot saved up there. So that's why he's... Tr trying really hard to get the, land this building here and the reason he's got the spearman escort is because it's difficult to unpack it if the enemy's right there like he's trying to unpack oh, it the, the unpack walking. got can yeah canceled because of the scout uh, and the spearman of course doing double damage to the scouts is gonna do really well okay <laughs> <It's bringing laughs> the bills over. he basically had to zone out with the villagers so he could land this archery range and i'm sure once this finishes he's probably gonna start yeah. double producing units yeah, so the cool thing here is, like you say, you can produce two at a time, um, and it just costs the same amount of stone as the total resource cost of the unit. Um, and so he's already queued up um, five Woo! double production of archers. <laughs> so he's going to really be pumping these out quickly. But Stefan's coming forward with the outpost. He's using his villagers to siege the Ubu here. Um, but the archers are now popping out two by two. There are some spearmen coming out on the other side. And the Khan is coming in as well. We've not really talked so much about the Khan. Um, let's, let's get some info on the Khan, Eric. So number of interesting things about the Khan. Uh, so first off, he's basically the scout of the Civ. So instead of starting with the scout, you get the Khan. So he does all the normal scout things of like, you know, collect sheep and like having a good vision range and stuff like that. Oh, this fight is really interesting though. So we've got a tower, we've got double archers. He's popped out two of those. So now he, he was at, you know, he had no units and he was like super behind and he, he's a little outgunned here though, right? Yeah, he's oh, going to get away. back. Kite, the tower was really helpful. <laughs> <laughs> but at the Khan, he's waiting for the signal arrows to come off. And uh, I think he's going to try and use one of these in just a moment. Uh, if he's still got some units to buff, he has because more archers okay. are coming out. And They're here coming. we go. Signal arrows should be coming out in a moment, I imagine. Or maybe he's or, just saving it. Yeah. So it's the more units you have, the more effective it is, right? And yeah, that's true. We've, uh, we've tuned it so that it has a very short duration. So it's a, it's a very high impact. You see the the huge 50% bonus, but it's only for five seconds. So you really got to wait till that critical time to maximize it. And then you have to wait. The cooldown is pretty long. So if you only have three archers, it's not going to be that good. So he's kind of waiting and probably massing up for the right time to activate a really juicy, powerful arrow. Yeah, I guess it all depends on whether or not, you know, it's critical enough to need to, to fire the arrow. But there are three arrows available, one which increases move speed of all nearby units, one which increases the attack speed, one which increases the armor. Um, and as you say, it lasts for five seconds. This is upgradable with a unique technology. Um, and also the Khan can, can fire off the Scouting Falcon as well, which provides line of sight over an area. Um, no need to do that just now. I think he's got plenty of vision of, of what's happening at the moment. As, uh, <laughs> and I don't think he likes it because <laughs> that tower was upgraded. So that yes. tower is going to be shooting by default. It's also garrisoned with five villagers. So each one of those is shooting an arrow as well. So you can see a lot of times these villagers are popping out of the archery range two at a time and they're immediately getting shot by a bunch of arrows. So this is a pretty tough spot for Mark. But look at that. He's got a ram coming in. 
has. He's uh, researched the siege engineering tech from the blacksmith. He's built a ram in the field with the spears and he's ready to assault this position and send Stefan home. Stefan doesn't have too many military units out right now. He's not got a great defense for this tower, so it looks like this tower may go down, although he is <laughs> trying to reinforce, but I think he's going to be pushed all the way back, losing villagers in the process as uh, Mark chases him down now. And he did actually just use the, the arrow there. Uh, he actually, I don't know which one he used, uh, I think it's already expired, but he's also getting the move speed from the YAM network, which was coming from the, the deer stones over here, so mm -hmm. it gives him that little bit of extra chasing power as he sends to farm back across the mountain range to, uh, to his side of the map. Yeah, that was great for pushing the enemy out, that extra move speed on the archer, he's able to give you a lot of villager key kills, and actually that ram, it's just been, just been attacking away, attacking away, and it was able to... Yeah get the burning state on this tower, which is really great for Mongols because they get to raid resources, which gives them 50 gold and 50 food for every building that they burn. So he got that from the tower and now he's working on the archer range trying to get even more gold and food. Yeah, so every time a building gets low on health, it will set on fire and that will trigger the raid bounty for the Mongols. Um, and actually, Stefan, we've also seen the, the camel archers coming out for him. This is a unique unit to the Abbasid dynasty. They get the camel archers and the camel riders. The camel archer, ranged cavalry archer type unit that has the camel, uh, sorry, the camel unease bonus. Now this actually makes horse cavalry units weaker when they're near to these units. Um, horses, they don't like camels. They no, get, no, they, they really they don't like weird. camels. They freak them out. <laughs> they're like spitting on things. There's not into it. Not good at all. And oh wow, there you go. A mark coming forward now as well with the archers. He set off his uh, maneuver speed arrow. So that was he's a got great use speed. of the maneuver because he was able to pick off two or three villagers there. And the reaction time was very quick for Stefan. He pulled his villagers immediately. Yeah. But those archers just sprinted in there so fast <laughs> with that move speed. Yeah, so he's really in a strong position there in the middle of the map, and while these camel archers are going to try and uh, contest this position, but I don't think he can really. They're oh, very bad against Oh, he saved rams. the spearmen and garrison awesome. and the ram! So one of the nice things with the camel archers is they're kind of similar to the archers in that they're doing bonus damage to spearmen. So those four spearmen are not going to be able to do anything about against four camel archers. They're going to die super fast, they're going to get kited but he popped him in the ram and gave him complete protection because the ram is only going to take one damage per hit. He's got 15 ranged yeah, armor. Yeah. So that was a great save. Very it was really cool. smart. And Stefan hasn't really been able to do too much with the camel archers yet. Um, we haven't really seen any cavalry out of Mark. Um, and the Mongols, you know, as a civilization, they do lean towards cavalry. They get mm -hmm. the uh, horsemen in the Dark Age, the very earliest time that you can train that unit in the game. Mm -hmm. uh, they also get the Mangadai Horse Archer, which is unique to the Mongols, um, available in the Feudal Age. We haven't seen them just yet, as he's opting at the moment to go really with this Archer and Spearman um, mass rush, I suppose, with all the double production coming out of the Uvu over here. Yeah, and another reason uh, cavalry could be really good on the Mongols is the raid bounty that mm. we're talking about, right? Like, if you have really fast cavalry, you're going to be able to run into position and burn down a building before the enemy can get there in time and stop you. And then and then you can just peace out, yeah. and you're like, no, wait, come back. <laughs> it's like, well, I already got my money. I'm burning your buildings. Yeah, Mongols can do so many things. They're really versatile as a civ, and yeah, getting a cavalry early and going for some raids could be huge. And Stefan, uh, oh, he's going to uh -oh, stumble across uh -oh, the bills down uh -oh, here. No. <laughs> there's, a, there's a low one. Can he pick off the low bills? Good find. Is he going to go oh, for it? Oh, he went it? right yeah, for it. Right go. for it. So, oh, but he's got the archers. Good save. Good save. Yeah. One villager kill. I mean, he is keeping Mark kind of on his toes, right? Like, these four camel archers have been running around for ages, and Mark's chasing <laughs> yeah, him down with 20, 20 archers. It's kind of a big distraction for him. Uh, but I wonder now if we have any um, anyone looking towards the next age, or, or kind of what, what is their game plan at this point? What's the next phase of the game? Yeah, what is the next phase? Oh, uh, this is interesting. Mark, um, something else that's unique about the Mongols, uh, they do not build farms. They're nomadic. Why would the, why would the yeah, nomads be building go, farms, right? right? they got to move. So instead, they get pastures, and pastures produce sheep passively over time. Um, and this is the, the Mongol food economy, essentially. They, they just constantly produce sheep. And if you build the pasture around the Uvu, they do produce faster as well. So there's some nice synergy there. But 
as we saw, Mark sort of moved his town center away from the Uvu, and that Uvu has to be limited to the stone on the map, which can sort of limit where you place these uh, pastures and buildings around it. That said, though, he's on the way up to Castle Age now um, with the Step Redoubt. Yeah, this is a really nice building because it acts as a drop-off point. The Gur is the Mongol's universal drop-off point, so you can bring back wood, stone, food, whatever that goes there. And it also researches all of the economic texts there, um, as well as 50% extra gold dropped off at this landmark. So it is a great landmark for the moving mechanic of the Mongol because you can slurp up a gold deposit with the extra 50% and then you just move it on to the next gold deposit, move your villagers there and you're getting the 50% all over again. Yeah, it's awesome. And um, you know, the landmarks have really been designed with movement in mind, uh, really encouraging players to use the movement mechanic and there's lots of benefits for doing oh, it. Con. Look at that, the Khan, the con. Oh, no. caught out of position. Um, and that's kind of a shame for Mark because those signal arrows can be so important mm -hmm. uh, and so decisive. But don't worry, Mark's Khan will come back. Um, <laughs> and actually, when the Khan dies, after a certain amount of time, he will respawn back at the town center. Um, the Khan is never truly dead. He mm -hmm. will always return. Yeah, and we've actually iterated on the respawn mechanic over time because the initial implementation was that every time the Khan died, it would be longer yeah. that it would take to, to respawn, and it took longer and longer and longer. Uh, and ended up, you know, it ended up being like five minutes at the end. Oh, so long, and we want to get the guy in battle. But look at this fight. Yeah, He's Mark got... here is actually getting the movement speed bonus, which is awesome for kiting the yeah, cavalry yeah, away. Yeah. Uh, but he's also down in, in an upgrade. The, the uh, archers from uh, Stefan here have the extra attack upgrade. He does fortunately have the support of his town center fire here as well. Nice, nice. And I think overall, these guys might end up trading well, relatively evenly if he continues to fight under the TC. He's got a big but... army though. Like, look, he's got more archers. He's got all those camels. The horsemen did really well. And look, the oh, upgrade just came archer. in for Mark. He's got veteran archers, but look how many. He's got so few now. Look, they're just getting picked off. Yeah, he's losing a lot here. But again, like fighting under the TC, Stefan's taking heavy damage from the town center. Yeah. But Mark might lose... Yeah, like, he's lost a lot in that fight. I mean, both players kind of neutralizing each other there, uh -huh, uh -huh. I think. Um, Stefan's still in age two, however, and that was his, like, big age two push. A big push, and he got wiped out. Yeah. It was, I think he got some villager kills, though, so so while he got wiped out, I think, yeah, let's see, he's got 40 for Mark, and then how much on the other side? Stefan has 56. 56. Very wow, nice. Wow, okay. So just, just sort of trading and keeping the enemy's army down while you have an economic lead is actually quite strong. And there's some extra vill some extra archers for Stefan that weren't part of his main army. It looks like maybe they were hunting for villagers down in the south. Yeah, I think he was looking down there, but uh, Mark's got the tower, of course, to keep those five villagers safe. So I don't know if they did too much. He's also built his Uvu down in the south as well. But now Stefan going uh, up to the castle age. He's going up with the culture wing. So the culture wing allows him to get preservation of knowledge. This is a really powerful tech. Uh, it allows him to reduce the cost of is all technologies by 30%. So there's a lot of compelling choices in the House of Wisdom. You know, do you totally. want the cheaper villages? Do you want cheaper techs? Um, if you go with the military wing, you get things like camel support, which improves the armor of infantry when near the camels. Um, there's a lot of choices to make here, but he's going up with the culture wing now, probably for the preservation of knowledge. He can also do medical centers, mm -hmm. which allows mm -hmm. his keep to uh, hit, heal nearby units. But meanwhile, he is walling the center of this map as uh, as fast as he can. Look at that. He's closed it That's off. That's a lot of villagers he's got working on those walls. And it totally makes sense because he traded out a huge chunk of his army. So he doesn't have yeah. a lot of defense. And we're talking about the Mongols. They really like to raid and burn down buildings. And the units that have torches that are good at burning down buildings can't attack stone walls, right? You have yes. to have siege units, which are a lot slower. So it really, really, you know, changes the momentum of the game. Yeah. And Mark hasn't seen this yet, so he's going to push out. He has actually got a couple of rams, nice. so he does already have a bit of siege. Uh, rams can attack walls, uh, but he will see this walling here, and, well, now he's got to sort of think, well, what am I going to do? Because Mongols, they can't wall. They don't have this option. Yeah. Um, and one of the, the sort of ways to really slow that Mongol player down and prevent that raiding, like you were saying, is walling up. Um, and the Mongols, they're not too too happy when they're walled out. They, they want to no, get in there no, and do want, damage. Yeah, you want to yeah. get in there. 
So um, yeah, it looks like these rams are gonna go in for an attack. And this was really smart of Stefan to put these stone wall towers here because they have a pretty high damage sprinkle, so it's able to get through most of the armor of the rams. And he's also got some villagers, look at that, these villagers on top of the wall repairing. So he's got the defensive bonus of the wall for these villagers. So you got, they got shot with a lot of arrows. Yeah. They're still alive, right? They take 66% less damage. So those villagers up there really well defended from the ranged units from Mark. Mark didn't have too many, just nine archers, but there was enough to keep the villagers alive. Yeah, look at that Repair one. It's got the wall. His health is so low, but he saved it because he was on the yeah. wall. Yeah, awesome. definitely would have been dead otherwise. And then Mark had to run away because Stefan put his own archers on the wall. Yep. And when they're on the wall, they also get a two tile range increase. So not only are they taking less damage, they're shooting further. And this becomes a really defensive position for Stefan. Now, if you're in Mark's position now, what do you you do you can't necessarily use rams because the towers will will take them out mm -hmm, you can't mm -hmm. really get too close to the wall because the archers will snipe you yeah. uh, what's your next move so manga or not manga but the trebuchets are a great option he's in castle age they will be able to outrange anything else and actually those those towers now, they are vulnerable to being set on fire and burned. And the burning damage happens whenever the building gets to 25% health. It doesn't matter what type of attack is hitting it. So even though you're not using torches with the trebuchet, you're still gonna set those buildings on fire. You can get the raid bounty and you can work on knocking it down and trying to get into his base. Uh, the other thing to consider is is building up your economy and like ramping it up to the next stage. So um, adding on markets is really good. The, we haven't talked about the Mongols uh, Silk Road, where as they get more and more traders, they're getting extra resources. So they'll get extra food, extra wood, and extra gold for for their market. And wow, he just put up a market. Convenient, actually. That's so Stefan. That's, that's yeah. Stefan. Um, and why would Stefan want to build a market with the Abbasid? Well, a couple of reasons. I mean, first of all, he's I want to talk about this market location. He's built it right at the edge of the map, Smart. and he's going to be trading with the trade post that's all the way on the opposite side. So this is going to be a really optimal trade route. The further you trade, the more value your trade yeah, produces. Yeah. And um, he's can trade with these neutral markets. He's safe behind his walls. This is a great way to ramp up his economy as he b builds these traders here. But uh, the Abbasids have a couple of bonuses. Um, one of the things they can do is actually, once they get the, the Grand Bazaar tech, they can choose which resource gets deposited um, from the traders. Nice. So instead of bringing back only gold, they could also choose to get food or wood or stone. Um, and also, if you look at the uh, wings as well. They have the spice roads, which can increase their trade income, uh, but he has to go for the trade wing to do that. So he doesn't have that available right now. But this is a huge push. Wow, from look at those farm. 40 archers. Oof. But look at this. He's got knights. so many knights. knights. Knights are such a good counter to ranged units, but then Stefan with the spearmen oh, coming in at clutch. the front as well. This is going to be a really big engagement here as well. Oh, the Khan. The Khan. No, not yeah. again. The Khan, why? <laughs> Oh, he didn't last too long, did he? He usually becomes a target uh, just because of how powerful he is. If you can get the signal hour off, that's great. But right now, this oh, fight nice. here with these all the knights. These knights are just running around. They're not, they need to get onto the archers and attack. They've been fighting the spearmen the whole time, and the spearmen are doing a lot of damage. Like, he had such a huge army of knights, right? And it's really getting whittled down here. And the other thing for Stefan at the back, he's got some spring odds in here. Now, spring odds you think of being great at dealing with other siege, but they're pretty good at dealing with knights as well, especially when they're uncontested. But I think Mark just has too many reinforcements. He's killed all of the spearmen now, and the knights can get on top of the, these archers and crossbowmen and really start to do a number on them. So. Stefan retreating back behind his wall. He might even pop some units on top of the wall here. And on the right side, oh. Mark adding in the traction trebuchets Very as nice. he tries to, to assault the wall on this right-hand side at the same time. Yeah, those stone wall towers have really been paying off for Stefan. It was a nice clean retreat. He was able to do a bunch of damage to the army, and he's been knocking down these stone wall towers. He got the raid bounty from the first one, and... It looks like he's gonna get the second one down too, but these rams, look at the, oh, oh. look at the ram health, they're so low. <laughs> they're, they're basically done for here. Five uh, hit points, oh, oh he knocked him down. Oh, but look at this, he's bringing the spring olds over, and the spring olds, they can actually shoot through the oh, gate. Oh, good shot, So good he's shot. gonna take out the rams oh, anyway. Oh, he got him. 
from the safety of the, the behind the wall here. So that was really nice from Stefan. He's using villagers to keep repairing the walls. The trebuchets from that mark trying to find a way through. Stefan, if he can put his units on the wall now, he will send his army away. And, uh, whoa, look at this. We've got a Manganel from Mark as well. So I think Mark's thinking, hey, you know what? If you put all your archers up on the wall, mm -hmm. they're going to be all clumped up really tightly. Yeah, I'll manganel that any day. Oh, and yeah. they take 66% less damage, but a manganel doing a lot of damage onto the onto the wall would still do a number on this archers. Yeah, if you can hit all the archers in yeah. one shot, that's a lot of damage. But for now, he's fallen back. Uh, I don't know why he doesn't keep ranging the wall with the trebuchets, to be honest. I think he could still be doing some damage here yeah, and maybe trying to I work on the, taking the wall down. I think the Springolds might have scared him off a little bit, because the Springolds do do bonus damage against uh, siege weapons. Yeah. So And they have, a, they have a pretty good range, right? Like, they have... Uh, ten range. They have ten range, yeah. and... Trebs are a longer range. However, the Mongols, they don't use the clockwork trebuchet. They use the traction trebuchet. So it's a little bit different of a unit. Um, it's a little bit shorter range. It's faster and it's a little bit cheaper. So it sort of fits that Mongol theme of being more mobile with the Trebs. So he was able to back off because they're a, a quick sort of faster unit. But it looks like he's he's going back in. He's got a, he's sort of rebolstered his forces. He's built a lot of rebuilt the knights that yeah. were killed from the, the, the spearmen. Well, seeing all these knights makes me think that Stefan might want to consider some more camels here. We've seen the camel archers already. Um, he also has the camel rider, which is mm -hmm. very effective against cavalry units. So um, we'll see what he can do there. And I think, oh yeah, he is adding some camel archers at the back here. But uh, Mark recommitting to attacking the wall now, trying to keep his army back so that they don't get uh, peppered by these arrows. Oh yeah, they're, they're doing a really good job. Like you're saying, the extra yeah. range too. They're getting a lot of shots off even as these knights just retreat. Yeah, I just love the way this looks, right? Like all, all up in here in the uh, in the choke point, really fighting for this. And uh, Mark, yeah, just He's kind bringing of bringing in the mangonels now. Can he get the sh Oh, he is. Oh, He's going to hit that. Oh, oh man. Oh, that's, that's a good amount of damage. But, like, all those archers might have just been killed if they weren't on the wall. Yeah. Um, so he had time to respond to that attack. And he's like, okay, totally. I can't stay here and keep getting <laughs> pounded by these mangonels. I got to get out of here. Yeah, totally. And uh, these guys really ramping up their production now as well. We've also got to keep back here for Stefan, um, really trying to make sure that if this wall is breached, that he does have another line of defense. He's certainly feeling the pressure from Mark at the moment, especially with all the siege that yeah, he's starting yeah, to Yeah, yeah, he's being sieged pretty hard. And it looks like the wall is, is pretty much down here. It's just going to be one more shot. And it there goes. it goes. And, and he's in. <laughs> he's in. <laughs> Um, he's just gonna go for it and whoa, hang on a minute. Where, where did Stefan's cavalry go? It was all here a second ago. Is he is he moving it? Oh, he's brought oh, it down to the south. Oh, is this a flank attack it looks like? Oh, this could be huge actually. I mean Mark hasn't committed fully into coming in yet, but he might be able to push this through. He's got a lot of manganels at the back so uh -huh, he could easily uh -huh. do the splash damage onto the spear at the front. He's got the, the knights and the archers in here as well, so it looks like Stefan will have to fall back with this army, but as he does the so... The knights run in and his out. cavalry run out. That's a, This is a bold choice. Instead of uh, defending with those cavalry, right, he could have come in for a flank and just clean up all those siege weapons because you've got torches on your cavalry. They will very quickly make short work of all these mangonels and... The, uh, the trebuchets are still back there killing buildings, getting raid bounties, so taking those out is sort of like the more straightforward path. So I think he's he's doing sort of a more advanced thing where he's just kind of like what going for the jugular and just try to yeah. try to find the economy and just knock him out of the game. Yeah, well, I guess Stefan feels confident that he can hold with these two keeps so mm -hmm. much so that, hey, you know what, this army that's pushing in, I can just ignore that. He's and not go even afraid of this huge <laughs> army. That's That's where he's at right now. He has got to be careful though, because the trebuchets could deploy here and start taking out the keeps from a distance, and he's kind of losing a few bills. But we see the medical centers in action oh. now as well, healing up the units Ooh. near the keep. They're taking a big mangonel shot or two, oh, but there's an, oh, there's another one. He's got he's got out the. I like that positioning. So he's yeah. got him sort of at the back of the keep, so they're still in range of the medical centers. And look at this raid. Oh, he's found the villagers. This oh. is what he's been looking for. This is huge. Mark's oh, going to lose so dying. much oh, here. Oh, so many dying. It's going to be so bad for him. And actually, look, his, his landmark is packed up right now. <laughs> if Stefan kills that, oh, then no. he could oh. actually... Oh, no, that's going to be awful. Why is he not killing it? An interesting thing about the, the landmarks, when they're packed up, they lose their armor. So while they get mobility, which is nice, but instead of having 50 ranged armor, they have zero, zero. ranged armor. 
the Piedmont Mark, pulling all the villagers out of the way of this raiding army here. And, I um, think that was a distraction landmark. Yeah. He was like, hey, don't worry about my villagers. Attack this vulnerable landmark because he's got multiple landmarks, right? So the villagers all ran away while he was kind of kind of bumping around with that and, and distracting a couple of hits. It's actually relocating his entire economy <laughs> to the front lines <laughs> and uh, exactly. building a gar over here. He's going to be chopping wood with these villas. As these, this, like, I guess he just can't deal with this. His army is actually quite immobile at the moment. It's mostly sort of yeah. The siege units weapons siege. are they're yeah. powerful, but they're slow, right? So. That trade-off means he wasn't able to come back and defend. He had to just commit to this attack. But Stefan has two keeps here, just really slowing down this army and, and kind of trapping them almost. Yeah, more raids here as well. And I guess Mark needs to be really careful that if he pushes in too far, the siege could be attacked from the flank. He's going to be mindful of that this mm -hmm, whole time. Mm -hmm. uh, Mark's at um, 66 villagers still. Stefan, on the other hand, 116. Ooh! Whoa! That's and, some, that's some economic power. Wow. And those traders must really be paying for themselves. 159 gold per trip. They are, however, kind of running through the middle of the battlefield. Oh, this is a dangerous <laughs> spot for a trader to be. I, I don't think the traders are gonna last yet. Uh oh, the sprinkles just turned. <laughs> no, yep. See you later. This, wait a second. Oh, okay. I thought Stefan was capturing the sacred site. I was like, hang on a minute. No, uh, he's taking the sacred site back from Mark. But Mark now really, like, low on units, actually. He's just got the siege. And he's using the Springholds to try and pick off the, the, the other Springholds. If the other Springholds are out of the picture, then his own siege will be a bit more safe. And you can see they have a lot of ranged armor, so they're taking a long time to die to the, the archers here. And actually, it's enough to force Stefan back because the threat of the Mangonel, yep. you know, he just can't push into this with his archers at the moment. Yep. Re re nice, nice attack there, and he is whittling down with those trebs. The raids are still happening for yeah. Stefan. He's attacking in like three different locations with his raid while defending his main base from all these siege weapons. Very impressive display from Stefan here. I'm just worried about Mark though. I mean, he's really low on the economy right now. He's also behind in population, so mm -hmm. it's not like he's got a huge army to, to compensate. Um, and he's, yeah, constantly chasing down this mobile army from Stefan, the horsemen and the camel archers, um, with the, his own archers, which are obviously never going to catch up. He is getting the raid bounty though, so when he does it's, set these yeah, buildings on fire. Yeah, just keeping him in a yeah. little bit, just getting that extra money, extra economy. Well, giving him a little bit more. It's adding in more trebuchets. I guess he's just hoping, you know what? With enough trebs, I can like slow roll my way in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. every time I set a building on fire, I get some gold and food. So he's maybe just hoping that he can keep setting buildings on fire. Oh, there basically. we go. He There's sets a keep on one. fire. <laughs> it's it's actually kind of an interesting decision with the Mongols of which building do you want to attack? Because it takes a long time to set a keep on fire. It's got 5,000 health, right? But if you go for houses, they only have 750 health. So you can set them on fire pretty quickly. So. If you're kind of economically behind like he is right now, it can be... Ooh, oh no, no he's falling huge. further behind from these raids! Oh no, Stefan getting in here. And I guess for the Mongols, it's really hard when you're on the back foot because you can't wall up. And yep. look at this now, Stefan coming in, he's oh, built up a large army wow. of cavalry. He's nice even got attack. the camel riders in there, and that's enough for the GG. Yep, that's, that's too many units. And he's got torches on all those horses, he just burned the mangonels and that was game over. Wow. Great game, though. I think um, Stefan there really showing off the power of walling, yeah. um, the power of being able to take defensive position, mm -hmm. um, and especially against the Mongols, like we say, who really want to be get getting in there and constantly doing damage. When you stall them out, things get a lot harder. That huge army of knights. He teched faster with the Mongols up to age three. He had a big army of knights, but then when he ran forward to raid, the whole thing was locked off. He wasn't getting in there. Yeah. So there you go. Hopefully you enjoyed the game. Uh, we certainly enjoyed casting it. And uh, we'll be talking about that a bit more in the Q&A afterwards. Yep. Hang around. We'll see you guys. Bye-bye.